Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come into our hearts. Come into this place. As we worship you and praise you, let your spirit run amok. Let it come into our hearts. Let it stir us to worship you and praise you. And be so stirred that we will want to honor your great command to go into the world and tell people of your love. You are an awesome God, and, and we forget that we're not just here to, to get tanked up on who you are and get enthused, but to take that entheos, that enthusiasm, that spirit, and go out into the world, to our families, our workplaces, and let you be known. So Lord, refresh us through your healing power. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. So there was a, a little girl and a little boy, and um, they were constantly, you know, at each other. They are about six years old, seven years old, and they were, you know, on the playground, the little boy would, would hassle the little girl and tease her and pull her hair and all that kind of stuff. Well, one day, she had on a um, um, white pair of pants, and she was, you know, in a nice t-shirt, and she was just a little kid, you know pink t-shirt and all that. And the little boy came and pushed her into the mud. And so she got up out of the mud and she turned to her friends and she said, someday I gotta tell him about Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that what we're called to do and be about? God's greatest concern is to win people to himself, to bring us back to himself, to his heart, to his ways, to his gift of salvation. And, and so as we celebrate it at, at Christmas and continue now to celebrate into the season of Epiphany, the light has come. The light no darkness can overcome. The light has come into the world at the manger of Bethlehem. And Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's come to scatter the darkness. Remember the darkness uh, came over the world little by little and day by day and century by century. And so at the time, the right time Jesus came into the world, God said, I need to bring these people, my people, my creation back to me. And so he sent Jesus Christ to scatter the darkness, to come and shine light into the life of humanity, all people who have gone astray, says scripture. And so John uh, says it this way in the Gospel of John. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then Jesus tells Zacchaeus, he tells Zacchaeus, listen, and Zacchaeus was a tax collector, and he was not sure, you know, what uh, uh, what he was believing, and um, and so he was a soldier of the Roman Empire, and he and Jesus uh, said to him, I have come to seek and save the lost, Zacchaeus. I've come to seek and save the lost. And so it's clear from today's gospel that Jesus is coming to seek and save the lost, and that he never intended to do this all by himself all alone. The gospel for today, the reading in the center of the aisle, Jesus is walking the shoreline of Galilee and he sees two brothers and they're, they're casting their net, they're doing a drag net kind of thing where they throw the, the net into the water to catch the fish. That's how most of fishing went on in Jesus' time. And he sees these two guys fishing and he invites them to come and follow him. Be my disciples. Let me guide you. Let me teach you. We don't know what the whole conversation was, but we know it was an evangelistic conversation. We know that Jesus was speaking a new way of living and was wanted to show them a new way of understanding this God. And so he said, and I will. I will make you fishers of people. He, Jesus never intended to seek and save the lost alone. He never s intended to do this mission that G God had sent him on all by himself. He never intended to do God's salvation plan all by himself, all alone by going from town to town and preaching and teaching. No, Jesus made a promise to the men who were fishing. 
you know, uh, Andrew and, and Simon Peter, and he said, I will make you, I will make you fishers of people. He didn't say, I just want you to keep me company while I go from town to town and village to village. He didn't say, well, I just want you to listen to me as spouse on this new way of understanding God. <clears throat> or I, I, uh, I, I don't, I want to, uh, I'm calling you and I want to see what happens first before I decide what we're going to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, no, he said, follow me and I will make you. God, when God gets busy, when God calls us, he will do it. And he, Jesus says, I'm going to do it. I will make you. I will train you up. It took three years for the disciples to be trained up, right? They followed Jesus for three years. And then uh, at the end, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he said to them, well, now you're on your own. Now, you know, you're here to, continuing to do. You're not on your own. You, I won't be with you any longer, is what he said. And, but you have, the, you have the power of the Holy Spirit to go out and to make disciples. Notice, but notice in today's gospel who Jesus called to work with him, to work for him and to work for the kingdom. Common laborers, poor, uneducated, a little rough around the edges, maybe a little harsh, a little proud. So don't ever think, don't ever think that Jesus cannot use you and will not use you to be able to share the gospel, to do and go and do some fishing. Fishing without bait, fishing without a fishing pole, fishing without a net. Jesus needs you and me to go to the lost, the spiritually confused, the people who haven't heard about Jesus. And quite frankly, we have a lot of people in our own country, in our own neighborhoods, in our own schools who maybe have heard about Jesus but don't know anything about Jesus, don't know anything about this God of ours and how life could be better and how life um, beyond here is important, eternal life, and that our eternal destiny hangs in the balance. There are a lot of folks who just don't know that, right here, and, right here, and you know them. And so, you know, do you have a heart for them? We have heard and we have seen and we have experienced many ugly things in the world. Drug addiction mm -hmm. is hitting homes and families and young people in record numbers here on Long Island and throughout the United States. Um, R. Kelly, if you know anything about him, a Grammy Award singer, um, arrested a second time for accusations of sexual abuse of minors. Maduro, the despotic leader of, of, of uh, Venezuela, uh, allowing his people to go hungry, not allowing the humanitarian aid to come into his country, to come into his towns and cities. Uh, a 16-year-old, I read, a 16-year-old boy uh, strangled his father with a dog leash because he was being abused and his mother was being abused by the father. Customs and Border you know, Patrol seized uh, $19 million worth of cocaine just the other day. The Catholic Church. The abuse and the scandals grow larger and larger, and that's the church. Why would anyone want to join the church when we're all quote unquote hypocrites? There are hit and run car accidents, there's stolen identities, there's gang violence. We have right here MS-13 all over the United States now, and, and on and on it goes. And the only force the only power that can change life, change the trajectory of the lives of these kinds of people and sin and the darkness in which we live and, and breed and breathe is the power of the love of Jesus Christ. A love that conquers sin and darkness. A love that wipes away shame. A love that is sad for the wounds. A love that patches broken dreams. And this, this, what I just said, is the radical message 
of transformation, of radical love that God has placed in the world. A love, let me say it again, that conquers sin. A love that can wipe away shame. A love that is salve for the wounds of our lives. And a love that patches broken dreams. This is the radical message that we have been given. The message which came in the manger of Bethlehem, which died on the cross and gave us the empty tomb. The message of God's unconditional love, his grace. It's been given to you and me to respond to, to take hold of, to commit to, and then to share it. God uses you and me to reach others with a deep, abiding, and unending love. Those whom God in Jesus Christ has called, he enables and he empowers to share that love. A love that can change the course of a life, of a family, of a community, of a nation, and of a world. All people matter to God. You have heard me say it. We are his handiwork. We are his poema. We are his poem. The Greek is poema. We're his poem in the world. We're his creation, handiwork. And if all people matter to God, they ought to matter to us. And so it's the cranky coworker, and it's the irritable uh, neighbor, and it's the irritating boss, it's the millionaire, it's the day worker, it's the nosy parent, it's the, the uh, overweight, addicted, drug abuser, it's the demanding spouse, it's the gay, straight, bi, whatever. All people matter to God, and they ought to matter to us. It ought to matter to us whether they know Jesus or not, or have heard about God's love. We have been called and sent to speak for Christ. Now, I know it's a very unpopular activity and sentiment in today's culture. That's the truth, that's the reality. But you know what? Every century, it has been unpopular. We can go through history. There's a uh, if you have the Smithsonian uh, TV station, I was watching parts of uh, the Roman uh, history and the Greek history before Jesus and at the time of Jesus. And every century, every century had its problems and its viciousness. And after Christ came into the world, still they didn't want to hear. In fact, it says in the, uh, the book of Acts, you know, shut up. Don't talk about Christ. Or you're going to be killed. It's no longer politically correct to share our faith, to speak about what guides our lives, how we make our decisions, what comforts us, what helps us in our sorrows. Uh, Donnie Applegate was telling me that a few weeks ago that he went to a wedding of a pastor friend of his young guy and he got married and um, there were what 200 guests 400 400 where are you there you are 400 guests you're usually over that way <laughs> uh, 400 guests and that pastor and wife bought 400 Bibles because he knew that he was dealing with the millennial generation and probably most of them didn't even have a Bible that's evangelism how can people call upon, this is from Romans 10, how can people call upon him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him and thus someone tells them? It's right there in scripture. That's the, that's the obvious question or a series of questions for us. How many how can people we know in our families, our workplaces, 
our friendship circles, our exercise class, our gym class, call on God for help, call on God for wisdom and guidance if they don't know him, if they don't know who to trust, and if they don't and if they haven't heard about him, the one then who, how can they trust? And how can they hear about the one Jesus, God, Lord and Savior, if nobody tells them? How can they hear about this awesome God, a God of hope, a God of love, a God of grace and mercy, if no one, and I mean no one, will stick their neck out, risk rejection, risk a cold shoulder, or you're crazy from your family and your loved ones. If we don't tell them, just remember, Satan doesn't want us. The serpent, the snake, Satan does not, the devil does not want us to find a boldness in our love for Christ and in our speaking and in our voice. He doesn't want us to share about his nemesis. Father, we are the billboard. We walk around it and we become your representation in the world. You are your billboard, Lord. You don't need to rent one. You have called us to do and be your word and your love in the world. And so, Lord, help us to, to speak about you simply by just saying easy sentences about how you touched our lives or that was a God moment or this or that has happened in my life and I thank God because it's just really easy and when people hear it, maybe just maybe they get touched by that. Help us to share the awesome love and mercy that you have for us. Mercy, you don't give us what we deserve. We deserve, we deserve um, your hand in our face. We deserve, you know, uh, only problems and, and difficulties and challenges. But your grace comes upon us. Your mercy comes upon us. You don't give us what we deserve. And your grace is spilled out upon us from the cross, from the empty grave. And so we thank you, Lord. Help us to do battle with, the, with Satan, the devil, and all his empty promises and, and remind us that we have such an awesome, awesome journey of faith because you love us and you desire the very best for us, and you come to seek and save the lost, and you say, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly, and, and so we have an abundance of life. Lord, this morning I heard about how we people who follow you and, and, and go to church and love you and honor you live longer and are happier in their lives, and that there's a breakdown in all of that in, in our communities and in our larger cities. And so, Lord, we're asking for healing. We're asking for healing in our cities and in our, in our communities where your word is not getting out, where your name is not being proclaimed, where people are not being drawn to you. We especially pray for the, the Roman Catholic Church and for all branches.
pictures of Christendom where there is abuse and horrible things happening, but especially in the Catholic Church, Lord, as we, as they meet uh, and have a, a summit to discuss um, uh, abuse, sexual uh, abuse among clergy and their parishioners. And so, Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for for the the Roman Church to stand up and make those changes, just as other branches of Christendom have striven to do just the same. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that wherever we are in our own churches, in our own communities, our own places, that we would strive to end um, abuses and hurtful rhetoric and hurtful conversation. Lord, we know that you desire the very best for us, that you are our God, our Lord, our Savior, our best friend. And if, if we're so inspired, why are we keeping it to ourselves? I, I don't know, Lord. <clears throat> I don't know how to reach the millennials. I seek your guidance and wisdom. We want to be a church that touches people's lives. And, and maybe if we are touched here in our churches and in our worship experience at Holy Cross, maybe, just maybe, we can take that and go into our families and make a difference or in our workplace. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for the, the opportunities that you provide. Help us to have the eyes to see those moments where we can just step in and say, you are the reason. You are God. You are Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this day, we worship you and praise you. And we ask you to be with those who are ill or hospitalized, who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for Doris Sprague and Jean and, and Meredith uh, looking for good test results and healing.